The United States says that it's increasing the scope and scale of military support for opposition forces in Syria. This after it concluded that President Assad's regime has used chemical weapons, including the nerve gas sarin, against its own people. The White House estimates that between 100 and 150 people have died from detected chemical attacks in Syria to date. The White House says the Nerve H sarin was used on a small scale more than once in the last year. It says between 100 and 150 people have been killed as a result. And it has specific dates and locations for the attacks in March, April and May in Aleppo in Homs province and also in the capital Damascus. Patty Colhane reports. According to a new intelligence assessment that has been shared with both Congress and key U.S. allies around the world, Assad has used chemical weapons, namely sarin gas, on a small scale, killing as many as 150 Syrians. Today's assessment is a confirmation of a preliminary intelligence report that the president spoke about last April. What we have right now is an intelligence assessment. Uh, and as I said, uh, knowing that potentially chemical weapons have been used inside of Syria. It uh, doesn't tell us when they were used, how they were used. Obtaining confirmation uh, and strong evidence, uh, all of those things we have to make sure that we work on with the international community. He said the aid to the opposition will include military support. He did not provide details. Suspicions about the use of chemical weapons were first raised in March. Syrian opposition forces have urged the U.S. to provide them with weapons. Rhodes said Obama plans to discuss the issue with other world leaders at next week's Group of Eight summit in Northern Ireland. Britain and France support the provision of weapons to the Syrian opposition. The White House says it will boost military support to the rebels, but won't say exactly how. A leading option, arming the rebels. That could include desperately needed ammunition for rifles and machine guns, as well as new shipments of machine guns. Shoulder-fired weapons to attack tanks, artillery, helicopters and jets, and mortars and rockets. The White House does not plan to put U.S. troops on the ground in Syria and is far from ready to commit to a no-fly zone. It's not entirely clear. Senior White House officials said today that the president has decided to increase support, military support, for trusted elements of the Syrian opposition. But they wouldn't say what that support is or even whether it would include sending arms to the rebels. Others have called for a no-fly zone over Syria. But today the White House said that that option is risky, costly, and wouldn't necessarily do much good. So I wouldn't expect a no-fly zone. <laughs> estimates that 100 to 150 people have died from detected chemical weapons attacks in Syria to date. Uh, this is clearly a small portion of the catastrophic loss of life in Syria uh, that now totals more than 90,000 deaths. But as we've consistently said, the use of chemical weapons violates international norms and crosses red lines that have existed in the international community uh, for decades. The U.S. decision on chemical weapons comes after both Britain and France said tests showed Syrian attack victims had tested positive for the nerve gas sarin. There are plenty of critics in Washington of President Obama's handling of the Syrian crisis. Republican Senator John McCain has long backed a no-fly zone. On Thursday, he said the president needs to be more decisive. Meanwhile, former President Bill Clinton is also weighing in, saying it's a bad decision for the U.S. not to intervene more directly. As the violence in Syria rages on, the U.S. says it will make decisions on its own timetable and look at international options at the upcoming G8 summit. The UN says its latest figure of 93,000 deaths in Syria is probably conservative. America faces a tough balancing act. The calls for action are louder than ever.